So in this video, I want to solve the differential equation y prime equals y. Uh, and so said it, stated in another way, I want to find a function which is equal to its own derivative. Ah, that sounds a little bit familiar, right? Although we haven't yet in this series developed the tools necessary to solve a wide variety of differential equations, we are still able to solve this differential equation using some mathematical facts that we already know. Can we think of a function who is equal to its own derivative? And hopefully we can think of one. We've, we, we, we've, seen, we've seen it before, right? Take y equals e to the x, right? Because e to the x is this really important function in calculus because e to the x is equal to its own derivative. And as such, it's a solution to this differential equation. The left-hand side and the right-hand side are both e to the x. It works. And more generally, uh, we get that our general solution, our general solution here would just be y equals c e to the x. Uh, because if you take this function right here and you take its derivative, you get c e to the x by our usual calculus facts with derivatives. And so it might not be apparent yet, but it turns out that we'll see later in this in this chapter, this, this, this unit about differential equations, that the fact that e to the x is its own derivative, that it solves this very basic differential equation. This is actually the reason why the number e is a so-called natural exponential, right? The natural logarithm. What's so natural about e? What's natural about e is that e to the x solves this fundamental differential equation, a function which is equal to its own derivative. We'll see very shortly why that's so important. All right, let's take a look at an example of a differential equation that might not be obvious at the get-go to us. Um, so in this example, take dy over dx equals 3x squared minus 2x, or another way, y prime equals 3x squared minus 2x. Now, in this situation, hmm, we need to look for a function y which solves this differential equation. But in this differential equation, what we have here is we know that the derivative of y is 3x squared minus 2x. That is, the derivative of y I can actually express without any reference to y itself. Um, in this situation, if you take this dy over dx, uh, actually, I'll just put it up here. Instead of using this y prime notation, we'll use the Leibniz notation, dy over dx. Um, I kind of like this notation here because it looks like a fraction, and as such, it can be manipulated like a fraction. If you times both sides of the equations by a dx, you get dy equals 3x squared minus 2x dx, like so. Um, the right-hand side, I have to, I have a dx and I have a function with respect to x. I can integrate the right-hand side with respect to x, and I can integrate the left-hand side with, well, just with respect to dy there, with, with respect to y. The left-hand side would equal y, and the right-hand side, let's see, we get 3x squared, its antiderivative is x cubed. We get negative 2x, its antiderivative is x squared, and there is a plus c. I don't know what that constant would be, but notice right here, we've now found the general solution to this differential equation right here. Um, this right here is a differential equation, right? We're looking for a function whose derivative is 3x squared minus 2x. As we try to find the antiderivative, we actually solved a differential equation. So one thing I want you to realize here is that solving or calculating antiderivatives is actually a type of differential equation. More generally, if you have the equation, the differential equation, y prime equals f of x, then the solution is going to be y equals the antiderivative of f of x. That is, y equals the integral of f of x dx. And don't forget the plus c, because we want the general solution. Um, if, you, if you have no plus c there, you're actually taking a particular solution. Um, you're assuming c is equal to 0. And so what I want to point out to you is that as we, in this series, have been calculating antiderivatives, we've actually been solving differential equations. And so I want to make an analogy here. In Calculus 1, you learned about this idea called explicit differentiation. But honestly, explicit differentiation, uh, we didn't learn about... We'll just pause right there. We didn't learn about explicit differentiation until we started learning about implicit implicit differentiation, right? The idea here is this, if you had a specific function y equals f of x, 
we could calculate the derivative uh, dy over dx through a combination of rules like the chain rule, product rule, et cetera. Now, on the other hand, implicit differentiation, you don't have the equation y equals f of x. That's actually forbidden to us. But we can still find y prime. Y prime is yada, yada, yada using basically the chain rule. We're able to do this. And so while implicit differentiation was a little bit different, we could find the derivative even if we didn't have the function y equals yada, 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 like we do in the explicit case here. Now, differential equations are essentially what we mean by implicit anti-differentiation, all right? That's what our differential equations are really turning out to be in this situation. The examples of anti-derivatives we've been doing thus far in this series would be what we call explicit anti-differentiation, finding an antiderivative when the function y equals uh, y equals f of x is given to you. Uh, I should say y prime equals f of x. We know the derivative explicitly. Um, let's find the function. Well, if we don't know the derivative explicitly, we could still know it implicitly by a differential equation. And thus, what we've done in the past is actually a special case of what we're trying to do now. Uh, let's look at a, let's look at a initial value problem associated to this. Uh, let's find the particular solution of the differential equation dy over dx minus 2x equals 5 when given that y equals 2 when x equals negative 1. That's our initial value. We'll come back to that in a second. Uh, initial, initial value. We will, we'll, we'll come back to the initial value when we're near the end. We have to first find the general solution. And it turns out that we're basically there already. Y prime minus 2X equals 5. Um, while this is a differential equation, it's not an explicit uh, differential equation. That is, we just have to find the antiderivative. It is implicit, but with a little bit of algebraic manipulation, we could just add 2X to both sides, right? And we end up with Y prime equals 2X plus 5. And since we can solve for Y prime uh, as a function of X, then taking the antiderivative, take the antiderivative of 2x plus 5 here, dx, we're going to end up with y equals x squared plus 5x plus c, right? And so we have a general solution, the general solution, but we need to find a particular solution. That's where this initial value comes into play right here. So we know that when y equals 2, x, uh, that is y will equal 2 when x equals negative 1. So we get negative 1 squared plus 5 times negative 1 plus c. We can solve for c here. We get 2 equals 1 minus 5 plus c. Uh, that is c minus 4. Let's add 4 to both sides. We get c equals 6, 2 plus 4. And hence, our particular solution should equal y equals x squared plus 5x plus 6. Pretty simple. We've been doing this type of stuff many times previously, right? This idea of solving, uh, solving an explicit anti-differentiation problem is what we have been doing. It's just a special case of this implicit anti-differentiation, aka differential equations that we try to do now.